we thank God for how far he has brought us. The last time we started the book of Ruth, the book of Ruth in the Bible, Ruth, R-U-T-H, Ruth. So we have already done the chapter one and today we are going to do chapter two of the book of Ruth. So take your Bible with me and let's read the book of Ruth. Amen. Get your Bible. Get your Bible. Let's read. And Naomi had a king's man of her husband's, a mighty man of wealth of the family of Elimelech and his name was Boaz and Ruth the Moabites said unto Naomi let me now go to the field and glean ears of corn after him in whose sight I shall find grace and she said unto her go my daughter and she went and came and gleaned in the field after the reapers and her hap was to light on a part of the field belonging unto Boaz who was of the kindred of Elimelech. And behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said unto the reapers, The Lord be with you. And they answered, The Lord bless thee. Then said Boaz unto his servant that was set over the reapers, Whose damsel is this? And the servant that was set over the reapers answered and said, It is the Moabitish damsel that came back with Naomi out of the country of Moab. And she said, I pray you, let me glean the let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheep. So she came and had continued even from the morning until now, that she tarried a little in the house. Then said Boaz unto Ruth, Hearest thou not, my daughter? Go not to glean in another field, neither go from hence, but abide here fast by my maidens. Let thine eyes be on the field that they do reap, and go thou after them. Have I not charged the young men that they shall not touch thee? And when thou art a first, go into the vessel and drink of that which the young men have drawn. Then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground, and said unto him, Why have I found grace in thy eyes, that thou shouldest take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger? And Boaz answered and said unto her, It had fully been shewed me all that has done, thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law since the death of thy husband, and how thou hast left thy father and mother and, and the land of thy nativity, and hast come unto a people which thou knowest not heretofore. The Lord recompense thy work, and a full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings thou art come to trust. Then she said, Let me find favor in thy sight, my Lord, for thou, for that thou hast comforted me, and for that thou hast spoken friendly unto thy handmaid, though I be not like unto one of thy handmaidens. And Boaz, and Boaz said unto her, At meal time come thou hither, and eat of the bread, and dip thy morsel in the vinegar. And she sat beside the reapers, and, re and he reached her parched corn, and she did eat, and was suffused, and left. And when she was risen up to glean, Boaz commanded his young men, saying, Let her glean even among the sheaves, and reproach her not. And let her fall also some of the handfuls of purples for her, and leave them that she may glean them and rebuke her not. So she gleaned in the field until even, and beat out that she had gleaned, and it was about an ephah of barley, barley, and she took it up and went into the city. And her mother-in-law saw what she had gleaned, and she brought forth and gave to her that she had reserved after she was suffused. And her mother-in-law said unto her, Where hast thou gleaned today? And where, and where wrongest thou? Blessed be he that did take advantage, did take knowledge of thee. And she shewed her mother-in-law with whom she had wrought, and said, the, the man's name with whom I wrote today is Boaz. And Naomi said unto her, Daughter-in-law, 
Blessed be he of the Lord, who had not left off his kindness to the living and to the dead. And Naomi said unto her, The man, the man is near of kin unto us, of our next kinsman. And Ruth, the Moabatite, said, He said unto me, Thou shalt keep fast by my young men until that they have ended all my harvest. And Naomi said unto her, he, her daughter-in-law, it is good, my daughter, that thou goest, thou go out with his maidens, that they meet thee not in any other field. So she kept fast by the maidens of Boaz to glean unto the end of the barley harvest and of wheat harvest and dwelt with her mother-in-law hallelujah so i just read the entire chapter of uh the book of ruth so make time and read it also beloved here i see a woman who is very hard working i see a virtuous woman in ruth who is from moab a land or a country a nation who serve not the almighty God, but serves what? Idols. Ruth was not lazy at all. So if you call yourself a virtuous woman, or if you want to be seen by the Lord as a virtuous woman, a woman of substance, a woman of value, then you must be hardworking. I beseech all the women in our ministry and every genuine woman of God to be hardworking. Ruth, the husband, is dead. So she has become a widow. And she didn't pity herself that now I'm a widow. So some people should come and pity me. Just as in this uh, uh, modern day, you see widows, uh, uh, women who have lost their husbands and they think or have this knowledge or mentality that their, their whole or their entire world has come to an end. When you go to Africa, we see the, the wicked thing that is done to widows from the husbands, the dead man's uh, family members. Beloved, if you are a widow listening to us at this time, we want to admonish you in the Lord that don't, don't pity yourself that your husband is dead. Do not look pitiful. If they have taken every every uh, property of your husband even if you told with your husband to make or acquire worth and after he died the family members have taken over which is so typical in africa we are here to encourage and admonish you that don't just put your two hands fold your hands and put it be, be between your thighs and look pitiful and 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 just be on the street begging or asking people to come and pity you no get up from wherever you are find you something to do if it is farming go and get you go and help people in their farmland whereby you have something to eat and feed yourself if you have children even ruth didn't have any children he didn't she didn't have any children and she didn't want to be lazy she wanted to be useful to her mother-in-law and so she said let me go though i'm a stranger here though i'm living in a foreign land though the people may not uh the people may not uh, see me as one of them but i will go and see what i can do what i can find for the both of us to eat beloved we are praying if you've been praying father give me a job give me a job do this beloved as you have prayed do not sit down fold your arms waiting for the job to drop onto your lap you need to step out there start looking for job start filling application here and there maybe you are in foreign land you don't have documentation as in immigration document whatsoever it is you pray that father may you pave a way for me may you make a way where there seems to be no way and step out to look for something uh, private or menial menial job to do Start from somewhere. Many people, they are praying and they are praying for something big and huge to just happen. Boom, just like that. 
God saw a chaotic universe. Uh, the entire uh, universe was chaotic, but in the eyes of God, he saw something more glorious, more beautiful, more than the chaos. And God began to speak. He said, let there be light. And then God created, made the animals. He made this, he made that. The God that you and I are serving is not a lazy God. The God that both of us, all of us are serving, he is never a lazy uh, God. He works six days. Beloved, if he, uh, and let me speak to my African women. If you're in Africa and, and you have a provision store, you, you are a market woman, you, 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 you sell produce like tomatoes, pepper, whatever it is that you sell. Do it like you are doing it unto the Lord. Everything that your hands find doing, work hard at it. And make whatever it is that you are selling, be excellent, be special. If everybody is selling tomatoes, when you go and sell tomatoes, beloved, do not sell it in a, in a very nasty, ugly looking way. Wrap it up. Clean when you go to wherever it is that you go and and buy the tomatoes in bulk. Make sure that these tomatoes are looking neat and clean. Have a plastic a plastic bag. Package it. Put your price tag on it. Everything that you find your your yourself doing. If God, if you want God to establish the work of your hand, then do it with excellence. Excellence. Work hard at it. God is not a lazy God. The God that you are serving is not a lazy God. Don't spend all your, your day, the full day in prayer centers, praying for God to come and give you a job. No, go and look for a job. Pray in your closet. Go seek a job. As you seek jobs and make up your mind, whatever, whatever I can find for now, I will, I will start doing it and I will do it with all my might. Maybe you are working for someone in their store. You are the you are the assistant, uh, uh, whatever title it is, that you are you are working for someone, beloved. Don't don't work in a good way because that boss, that supervisor, that manager is watching you. Even when they are not watching you, do it with all your might. The virtuous women or women with value in Christ. Those who have Christ form in them, you we all ha should have integrity in the sense that whatever you are doing, you come out of your whole heart, do it wholeheartedly with integrity. That whether someone is watching or not, it is God that will reward you. And so, if you have someone that is that you are working under, even if they are more treating you, beloved, do it with excellence, let them come and see a perfect job done by you even if they don't praise your hard work inwardly they know that you are hard working and god will reward you god will reward you so women and women of god whether you are married or not whether you are a widow whatever you are whatever category you you fall under we must not be lazy that's one of our lessons today in this chapter you must not, we must not be lazy. We should find something to do with our hands. If you are married, find something to do with your hands to support your husband. Don't say that, ah, I used to, I, th this is my trade, this is my skill, but I no longer want to do it. And then be, just become a housewife. You become liability. And anything liability is of no use. That the value comes down. And so our husbands must see us as asset. Asset in the sense that we add value to their lives. Unless your husband is working that job that can really and truly take care of both of you and the children. And he specifically says that my wife do not work so that you can take proper care of the children for me. If your husband give you that instructions and you sit down with him and you all, the both of you are, have accepted 
that okay he really want it's not you going to suggest to your husband that uh, let me be a housewife and take care of if that man has a, a the best job that can truly take care of the home where you are able to save something and do something with it something property that you can call your own then that is okay that is that is acceptable if that if it's coming from the the man that you should not work so that you can take proper care of the children and so as you are even home taking care of the children beloved do it with all your might when your husband come home from work he should find a house that is tidied he should find a, a home that is well kept and his favorite food, everything should be ready for him to eat. Don't say, I live in Europe, I live in uh, USA, I live in Canada, I live in the diaspora, and women have rights. And so, even if I'm, a, uh, I'm, 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 I'm taking care of the children, I need to take care of myself too. So if he come and he come and serve himself, it's nothing. Beloved, a virtuous woman, a woman of value, a woman of substance, don't think in that manner. We must be hardworking. Our husband must find happiness and, and, and joy and, and feel proud and feel good and no regret for marrying us. Those, those uh, women, the African-American women, the, the whites, whatever, whatever race that you are, women, God said, we must be submissive unto our husbands, our own husbands. We must be submissive. Submission, being sub, submitting to your husband does not mean you are foolish or you are stupid. So do not let any friends spew nonsense to you that, that why should you submit to your husband? Why should you do this? Uh, women have their rights. Women can do this and do that. If you do that, the Lord Jesus will never be pleased with you. And you cannot call yourself a virtuous woman or a woman of value or a woman of substance for the Lord. Ruth was hardworking. Guess what? Even when Boaz had not come to the field where Ruth was uh, helping and, and trying to make ends meet for herself and her mother-in-law. She worked from morning till evening. Beloved, don't think that uh, this job that I'm doing, nobody sees me. Nobody acknowledge, acknowledges me. Nobody really, uh, in fact, I am not going to get paid and nobody, I'm not going to receive any compliment. My husband doesn't even compliment me. Whether your husband compliments you or not, do it as you are doing it for the Lord. Why? Because your reward, your reward is going to be great, even on this earth before the one in heaven and so when boaz as we have read when boaz came and saw ruth and acts of her the men around testify of the hard work of ruth and when boaz began to speak to uh, ruth he said that i have heard how you left everything Beloved, beloved woman, uh, woman in the Lord, women, we made the hard sacrifices. And that doesn't make you stupid or fool. We make hard sacrifices for our children, for our husbands. It doesn't, it never makes you less any human. It doesn't make you less. So do not listen to friends so that they will spew to you that, ah, why should you sacrifice all your time, everything, your energy, everything for this man? Even They don't even appreciate you when you are sacrificing all this. They don't appreciate you. Whether they appreciate you or not, do it as you are doing it for who? The Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. Let's see what is written over there. Whether... Therefore ye eat or drink or whatever ye do, do all to the glory of God. So whether your husband compliments you or not, do it as you are doing it what? For the Lord. 
So do not listen to your friends telling you you are being a fool, you are doing this and that, even your husband is still insulting you, he's cursing you out, he doesn't appreciate you, he appreciates his family more than you, whatever it is. Don't overlook all that. All that I'm saying is that overlook all that, even if our men are being ungrateful, overlook it and keep on doing that which is best for the family. Keep on being submissive. That doesn't make you a less human being. But your reward is with Christ Jesus. Your reward. If your husband has not come to the, the knowledge of the truth that you have come to, it is a matter of time and prayers for him. It's not, it's not you, you know, being pompous and being too prideful, arrogant, and being harsh and rude. That will solve the problem. Always try to seek a way to pray with him. A family that prays together and communicate will always stick together. So always try to have a time where he's free and then do Bible study and pray with, with him. And then as you are doing the Bible study, you bring the challenges in the family in a very peaceful manner. Even if they raise their voice, that shouldn't discourage us at all. Women, we keep the home. So we must be submissive. We must be hardworking. Don't take your husband for granted and say, ah, since I've been leaving home, she doesn't, he doesn't say anything, doesn't complain, so let me continue to leave home. Let your husband find value in marrying you. That is what a virtuous woman does. Proverbs 31 verse 10 to 30 talks about who a virtuous woman is. And God is looking up to us to behave as such. Ruth went to glean in the fields of Boaz, which was a, an acceptable occupation for young women at that day, you know, during that time. Landowners were commanded by God to leave a portion of the crop for the poor to glean on. Ruth showed initiative as she, as she set out to work. Beloved, you are praying for job. You are praying for job. Get out and look for job apply do application but sister i've already applied keep applying even if you have to go to the same place twice go there again and go to other places whilst you keep on praying don't say i've applied and i'm praying so i'm just going to do no make an effort step out ruth took the initiative her mother-in-law was old and she knew she knew that there's no way this woman can get out there into her own family or people and start working so she had to take the initiative there were so many challenges ruth was facing once she could have been rejected you know she she could face uh people snaring at her how dare you a stranger come and do this and do that you know she could she could feel that hatred and everything but guess what? She brushed it off her shoulder. Ruth for, in fact, he, he, she, didn't, she didn't care who would insult her, who would be friendly with, to her. She didn't care about all those things. She just said, I am going to get out there. I'm going to see what I can find. Women, we, are, we, we, set, we, we, we take the initiative. Sometimes we, you are married to a man that is kind of timid in, in 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 a lot of ways you need to discuss issues and and as you discuss issues you take initiative you take the first step to help the family out don't wait ah my husband said it's going to be well so let's wait no don't 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 be sitting down my husband said my husband said take the initiative step out go and find something a menial job to do Maybe you used to have a, a great job and you have lost it. It doesn't matter. Come to the level of a, a, a servant. Work for someone. Get the money. Save some. And then get yourself back up. Hallelujah. You cannot just sit and wait for God to, to work in your life. But you must cooperate and work with God. You must cooperate and work with who? With God. Ruth did what needed to be done. Even the details of life necessary to provide a living are profitable when done for the glory of God. You know, not just oh, the, just only what you eat today or drink. 
Though Bible says that in, in 1 Timothy chapter 6, that if you get what you eat and, and drink and clothe in, you should be content with it. But if you can go the extra mile of bringing a, a, a better living, go, go and do it. Beloved, do it. You must, we the parent, we must leave a legacy for our children, not the other way around where you become old and you don't have anything in your retirement you don't have any savings you have no retirement plan you have nothing save for your funeral everything will come and fall on your children that is not good that is not good we must work hard and pray that god will bless the 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 the, the work of our hands psalm 90 verse 17 Moses prayed that prayer. He said, indeed, let the work, bless the work of our hands. Bless the work of our hands. And so if you are not doing anything, a, a, hand, a handy work, what do you want God to bless? There's nothing to bless. So step out there, do something for yourself. There is no faith in life, in the life of a Christian. Neither was it faith that took, uh, 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 it, it wasn't faith Ruth chose to work in the field of a kinsman of Naomi's named Boaz. God is at work and guides you in the routine, even the desperate circumstances of life. Boaz looked with favor on Ruth and told her to remain in his field throughout the harvest. He also made special provisions for her at mealtime. Beloved, I want, to, I want you to understand that when you take the step, as you pray and you take the step, God will now open all opportunities, all other doors that to be open, that needs to be open. Why? Because you've taken the initiative. Don't sit down waiting for manna to fall in your uh, mouth. Don't rely on, on false prophets telling you, hey, you are going to travel here, you are going to travel there, you are going to do this, you are going to do that. Pray yourself. Take the bold step. Take the initiative. And God will open other avenues to you. Ruth found favor with Boaz. Why? Because Boaz even testified of how hard working Ruth was. Beloved, if you are going to find favor with, with, with God and with men, we need to do something. You need to come out of that comfort zone. You need to come out of that lazy shell and do something as a woman of God. As a woman in Christ, a virtuous woman, a woman of substance, a woman of value, you need to take the initiative. Manna just don't, won't fall into your mouth. You need to step out there, do something, and God will bless. His favor will come upon you when you take the step not to be lazy, waiting for the government to come and uh, donate to the widows and whatever. If you're a widow, that is not the end of your life. You can take a step and, 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 and get you a minion job, something to take care of you and your what your children. Advice to the married women. Ruth, Ruth and his and her mother-in-law was bonded. They bond. They were at peace. They lived in love and harmony. And Ruth had her mother-in-law best interest at heart. That to go out there and, and look for a job to take care of her. Many women got married to some men. And they have turned, they've made their husbands estranged to their family members. You see a Christian woman who will be spewing nonsense into the husband's ear. Your mother is a witch. Your mother is evil. Your mother is wicked. Your mother is that. Your sister is this. Your sister is that. And the, and the man, if he's not sensible enough, the man, if he's too weak, will listen to the wife and will start to begin to hate the, the mother. Many women do that. Beloved, if you are born of Christ, you don't do that wickedness. Don't go and pay your mother good to your husband and paid his mother good to him and bad to him 
Don't go telling telling your husband every day. See what your mother has done. See, every day you are complaining about whether they are doing evil or they are doing whatever it is that you've seen in your dream concerning your mother, your mother-in-law. As a virtuous woman, you will pray for her. You will pray for her. And in the physical, you will show her much love. Regardless of whatever your prophet have told you about your mother-in-law. Regardless of their action and attitude towards you. You will still show them the love and care. For they gave birth to that man that you are enjoying in your home. Maybe somebody will not agree with me. Some women will not agree with me. But that uh, mother, some mother-in-laws are very terrible. They could be terrible for all they care. But if you show her love, at the end of the day, love will win. God always wins because he's love. If you would take this admonishment from us, and regardless of what that, that woman in law that you've tagged as wicked and witch and whatever, if you will reciprocate, if, you, if your retaliation, if whatever you, you are doing back, it's not revenge, being spiteful and cursing them, insulting them, and also trying to abuse them back. You both will lose. And your home can never be called a peaceful home. And you will not, uh, do not think that the favor of God will come upon you, nor all your, your home. And so regardless of how messy the husband, your husband's, family members are sister-in-law, brothers-in-law, whatever in-law. Please treat them with respect and kindness, regardless of what they do. Love will always conquer. It can take years. Love will always conquer. That is our last uh, advice, encouragement for this chapter. Ruth brought everything that he, she had gathered to the mother-in-law. said, this is what I got today. And she gave all the details. I'm not saying that make your mother-in-law your best friend or your sister-in-law your best friend. They cannot be your best friend. But they should not be your enemies either. You should not hold any grudges against them. You should never hold any grudges against them. Because love conquers. And so grudges and everything, you fail just as they are failing. And as virtuous women, we want our lifestyle to be pleasing unto the Lord. We want when God appears, the Lord Jesus appears, that we shall receive well done, good and faithful, virtuous women who manage our homes peacefully and with much love. May God bless us. May God help us to overcome any challenges in our marriages, in our personal lives with our parents and siblings. In Jesus' name, amen.